Thank you. Okay. So again, what we're doing right now is we're creating the enemy. So at this point, when I share my screen, so this is the cool part of our game, okay? So right now, if I run this, okay? So I take a look, I'm running this, okay? And we've got our bullet system. I can move up and down. The key thing again, going over, I know it's going a little slow, sorry, but I got my constraints this way, right and left, and I've got my constraints up and down. I've got my bullet that's made as a prefab. Both of, or everyone in here should have, at least for now, everybody should have at least a, um, what's it called? Everybody should have a, uh, how do you say? Um, everybody should have like their materials. That's what I was trying to say. Okay, so right now what we're going to do is we're gonna choose a new 3D object. Now you guys can choose whatever you want uh, I'm just going to choose right now. I'm just going to choose a sphere. Okay. So I'm going to choose a sphere. I'm going to move it up a little bit. Um, okay. In my materials, I'm going to create a new material. Uh, create material. I'm going to call this enemy. So everybody should be doing the same thing. Go ahead and create a new object. Enemy. That's fine. Uh, and then add a material to it. So go ahead and do that. Okay, green is good. And I'm gonna drag it to my sphere. That's solid. Okay. All right. Okay, so this is good. If I run this, okay, great. Nothing's really happening. You know what? The black is kind of making things harder to see a little bit. So let me go to my, where's my camera? Let me zoom out a little bit. Come on. Where's my camera? There you are. Let me change your solid color. Let me change it to blue. There we go. That's a little bit easier to see everything that's going on. Okay, perfect. All right, so I have my enemy. I have everything good. Okay, again, if I play this, Nothing's happening. Okay, we're good. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, great. Perfect. That's all I want. All right. So now what we're going to do is we have to give this enemy, basically, we have to give it a script. So this is a decent size for an enemy. I'm okay with this size the way that it is right now. So that's okay. So I'm all right with that. All right. So what we're going to do is I'm going to, so first of all, Sphere, I'm going to rename him to Enemy in my hierarchy, okay? So again, to the left, my hierarchy, I'm going to rename it Enemy. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag my Enemy into my Prefab folder, okay? I want my Enemy to be in my Prefab folder, all right? Okay, so then the next thing that I'm going to be doing, so after I've grabbed, I've dragged them into my prefab folder, I want to go to my scripts. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to, where is it? I'm going to create a new C sharp script. So again, for people that are just coming in, just as a recap, I've created a new object. I named it enemy. I dragged and I gave him a material. So he's green. So he can kind of stand out. I dragged enemy into my prefabs folder. So I have now two prefabs. I have my laser prefabrication and I have my enemy prefabrication. The next thing I'm doing is I'm going to create a script. Now, remember when you're creating a C sharp script, you want to name it right away. I'm going to name my enemy with a capital E or yeah, capital E and I hit enter. If you click somewhere else and then rename it later, you have to remember that this, you'll need to go in and you'll need to change this area right here to make sure that it matches. So it's always good that when you're creating a script, just rename it right away, hit enter, and it will do it for you. Otherwise, you've got to go into the script and you've got to manually change it from like new class behavior or something like that to uh, enemy. All right, so then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to drag, we're gonna click on our enemy, 
we're going to drag our script into our enemy. And if we did it correctly, the script should show up right there. Yay. Okay. So right now, nothing happens. Same thing. The script does nothing. We're not worried about that. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, so I'm going to switch over now. I'm going to open up my enemy script. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to Visual Studio. So I'm opening up. And I'm going to stop sharing. By the way, esports players. So do really well. So esports play versus sent me a lot of cool items that we are going to be giving away for esports people. So make sure that you continue to do well. Keep in touch with me and Miss Erring that you guys are starting your competitions for play versus the official competition starts next week. So, but like I got some keyboards, RGB keyboards, mice, headsets and stuff like that. So we're going to, hopefully you guys, I can give those away. I'll probably personally send them to you or I'll drop them off. So, all right, here we go. Share screen and enemy. All right, so at this point right now, okay, this is what we should have, all right? I should, right now, you can go, you're going to be able to go back and forth to your game, which is fine, okay? So we have an enemy behavior. And what we're going to be doing right now is we're going to be, basically doing a Galaga style game, okay? Now enemies by default have a certain speed. So if you guys remember Galaga, you can go right and left or you can go up and down to a certain limit, okay? And then what happens is the enemies are coming down randomly from the screen, okay? So first thing I wanna do is I wanna set the speed by which the enemies are going to come down. So I'm gonna say private speed equals, oh, private float speed, sorry. Private float speed equals, how fast do I want it to come down? Three. Okay, 3.0F, all right? Now, is the speed of an enemy something I can change or something that I would want to test, making it faster or slower? Absolutely. Very good. Thank you, Kenzie, for the nod. Yes, absolutely. So I would definitely want to serialize this field. Again, remember, guys, you serialize. what serialize field does is it basically allows you to, when you serialize a field, basically what you are doing is you are saying, uh, okay, I want to make this variable available outside of, um, I want to make it available outside of, Visual Studio, I want to be able to just change it in the inspector for testing purposes at any given time. If the, okay, the, if I don't have serialized field, it's basically like you're saying, okay, don't do that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my update. All right. So right off the bat, I want to change the position. Okay. I want to, I want to basically just have it. I want to start testing it. I want to make sure that it can just go down. So I'm going to say transform dot translate. And I'm going to create a vector. I'm going to call upon vector three dot down. What did the bullet do? Vector three dot up. The bullet or the, the enemy is going to be vector three dot down. Okay. I'm going to multiply this by the speed in real time. Okay. Transform.translate vector three dot down. Now remember, we gave the bullet a rule. Whenever we press the space bar, create a bullet, it's gonna go transforms or it's gonna go vector three dot up at a certain speed in real time. With the bullet, or with the enemy, the enemy is basically going to automatically spawn, okay? And it's going to be going downwards at a speed of a certain speed. So if I do this, okay, now I save this. Run your game, guys, and see what happens. Okay, what happened? 
how many of you guys, if you did it correctly, what should have happened is this. If you did it correctly, you should have gotten this. All right. Now, what do we need? So the enemy is off the screen downwards, right? What do I need to do now? Riley. Set the barriers. So I could, I don't necessarily need to set the barriers. Could I set the barriers and make them bounce all over the place? Yeah, that kind of would be cool a little bit, okay? But no, I don't want it to do that, okay? Instead, every, now again, as I told you guys, every time this is on the screen, you're using up memory. So he's coming off the screen. So I have two options. Okay. One, I could just destroy him once he gets down here, which makes sense. Or two, there's a possibility if I destroy him, maybe it might affect our score without us knowing it. What I could do is I could say, look, if he gets in this position down here, reset him up to here until he's destroyed. So he can go down here and once he gets to this range, just respawn him back up here. Okay. So let's do that instead, because if you think about it, that's the way most games are made in terms of like to save memory. If you get down here, don't destroy him. Just he's out of the television range. Just put him back up here so that he can fall back within the range. So what we're going to do is we are going to, let me go back. Let me share this. Where's my share screen? Uh, I hate Zoom sometimes. Okay. Boom. All right. So what we're going to do is this is fine. We want it to move. We're not worried about that, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to say at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to say if, if transform dot position dot y is less than negative 5.0f, okay? Now, let me check my player. Let me see what my range is. So you guys can always check to see too. So if I were you checking your range again, what I would do is I'm going to play my game. Okay, I'm going to click on my guy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move him down in the game. So if you can see my negative Y up here is negative 4.2. So negative five is down here, okay? I want to just double cut, check and confirm my positive value is six. So I'm probably going to want it to respawn at somewhere around seven. Okay, so keep those in mind. Negative five, because that's where once the enemy goes out of range. So right now I'm at negative 4.2. So if they're at five, they are completely off the screen. To even play it safe, to play it safe. I can say, you know what, if they're less than negative 5.5, that way, just in case the in case the enemy happens to have a big shape, that way you're accounting for that. So if his position going downwards is less than 5.5, I'm just gonna overwrite where he is. Transform.position equals new vector three. As you guys are starting to see, vector three controls everything. Position, uh, translate, position, rotation, and scale. Transform dot position equals a new vector three. Transform dot rotation equals a new vector three. Transform dot scale equals a new vector three. So that is so that's how we control it. So I'm going to say zero, seven point zero f, and zero. So save this. Now run your code, and see what happens. Oh, Marty Shifu. Okay, now, so what we're going to do now is we have one problem. Uh, let's see, uh, Ethan Saris, okay? Kind of going to be a, Ethan. Yes. Kind of going to be a pretty boring game, right? If we can just stand there and just shoot the bullet in the exact same location, right? Yeah, that'd be pretty boring. Be pretty boring.
pretty boring. You get a pretty high score, but it would be pretty boring, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So what we're going to do instead is this, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to go back to our scale, okay? And what we're going to do is we're now going to work with a random variable, all right? Now, random, it is important to understand what random does. Random is basically depending on the, it gives you a range, okay? You have to choose between a random set of numbers, okay? Where again, so for example, what we're gonna do is right here in the X, okay? Right here in the X. Seven is where the Y is. It's off the screen on the Y axis. That's fine. We don't need that to change. That's just the height of where it's gonna go. But the X axis, we want it to be random where it comes, correct? So in order to do that, I want to say, I wanna basically use a built-in tool in Unity that will just choose a random number that when we give it, so for example, I'm gonna say this, instead of my zero in X, I'm going to say random dot range. And in parentheses, I'm going to put negative 8F to 8F. And basically what this does is it's going to call upon a number, a random number. Okay. It's going to call upon a random number that is in the field of negative 8 to positive 8. So basically it has 16 possible numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven, negative eight, eight. So every time the, the monster gets to this position, guess what? Boom. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to just run this. Okay. And actually the first, you know what I'm going to do first also, I'm going to change my, I hate when I do that. Okay. Um, I'm also going to change my float speed to four. Eight, negative 8.0 to 8.0, good. Transform, do I have a misspelling anywhere? No position equals new vector three, we're in that range. Negative 8.0 F to 8.0, okay, that's bingo, good. Save it. Oh my God, what the hell? I don't have any errors. It says that range does not exist, like uh, in random. It, it random dot range exists. Second, random. You have to capitalize the R in range. Do I have? No, I shouldn't have to. It's a method. Is that what did it? This is the same thing as in Java. It shouldn't be the same. Yeah, it, it works. It works out for me when you capitalize the R. Okay, if that's the case, let's take a look. Let me see. Yeah, that. yeah. Did that work? That's weird. It's the same method as in Java. That's weird. Oh, I guess so. Sorry, guys. C sharp of using my Java knowledge. Okay. So if I now share this, take a look. So the minute it's doing that, the monster is coming. Okay. All right. So now, okay. So here's the thing that I want you to do just a little mini challenge. Okay. This is your mini challenge. This is gonna be your little homework assignment because this is the end of class right now. As you can see, if we go back to our code, we're gonna just review the code really quickly or we're gonna review what we did. So just in baby steps, okay? I made a new enemy. I renamed an enemy. I went to my materials folder. I gave it a new material. I dragged it onto my material. I created, uh, so then what I did was I dragged my enemy into my prefab folder, now giving me two prefabs. From there, I created a script called enemy. Okay. I named it enemy right at the start and I dragged it onto my enemy. Okay. From there, I now go to my visual studio. Okay. Now what I did was I created a field 
for my speed. Okay, this is basically going to be the enemy speed. I serialized it because there's a possibility I would want to change it inside my game. I then go to my update. Okay, I have transform.translate vector three. Okay, and what this does is the transform.translate vector three, this basically gets it going. It sets it in motion to just start going in a downward motion at a speed of four pixels per frame in real time. Now, we test to see if this object gets to a certain point, okay? If this object gets to a certain point, so in this case, negative 5.5 F, which would be in my instance, at least in my game, off the screen. If it gets off the screen, we change the position of where it currently is, and we give it a brand new position. And we use random.range, which we, from negative eight to positive eight. That gives us a range basically within our scale on the X values. At a height of seven, which is off the screen up high. And we're not worried about the Z, so don't worry about that, okay? So boom, this is what we've done today. So if at this point, we are so close to getting some of uh, most of the hard parts down, which is great. So we do this and we take a look, okay? All right, we have got a guy, okay? All right, so what I did is, if you notice, oops, sorry about that. So if you notice what I did is going faster. Right here, I'm testing the speed, okay? You'll notice because I serialized the field, I can just go ahead and change it right in here. Okay, it's back to three. That looks good. This is for testing purposes, guys. Okay, five. Okay, that's actually a decent speed. Actually, what about six? Okay, six is actually the speed I like. So I'm gonna stop my game and I'm gonna go into here, change this to six, command save, go off my guy. And if I look at him now, that's weird. Why did my speed three? Should be six. Okay, let me see. Yeah, there we go. So, okay, and so now, come on, right? Boom, yay. All right, so that is where we are at. Now, the next thing that we are going to be doing, okay, the next thing that we do, we are going to be, hold on. But the next thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be working with collision detection. Now, tomorrow in class, just be ready to go. I have a feeling collision detection is going to take us the entire class from beginning to end. No time to, the good thing is, you know, we had the time today to make the materials. We had the time to make the enemy, to fix any few errors. You need to make sure that this is working. As soon as I'm done with this class, I am putting this video on the topics page, okay? And I thought, I thought today's class went pretty good pace. I thought everybody was able to keep up with it. I thought it went pretty slow and uh, the, the code was easy to think other than the range. But again, I thought that's my job. I got to remember guys in one day, I teach Python object or C sharp and Java. So my brain gets frazzled like today. Today, I'm going to teach two classes of objective C, then I'm going to teach Python and then I move on to advanced Java. So sorry if my brain farts are a little bit too, uh, you know, close to each other. So let me get this up, get this going. Um, how many of you need me to send you the enemy script or are you guys okay? Ethan, you want me to send me the enemy script? Yeah, it says I'm getting a syntax error, so. Do me a favor, Ethan, share your screen real quick. Like my code? Yeah, share your code. Let's check it out real quick. Anybody else, if you're done, have a great day. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Again, be ready to go. Collision detection. I have a question, Mr. Martinez, before yes. um, class is over. What's up? Uh, it's for you, Schwartz. Okay. Are we only doing play versus and the games that Miss Erring showed, or, or are we still doing Minecraft or no? Uh, right now it's uh the the because right now here's the thing is we're I think we're allowing a few people to do that, but the problem is um what's it called? The problem is that especially next year HSEL if they're not absorbed by play versus they're going to be gone. We're allowing a few people to do it for Overwatch because for some reason CIF said no to Overwatch and Fortnite, which is the dumbest thing. 
Overwatch yeah. is basically Plants vs. Zombies on the yeah. Xbox. Yeah, CIF said no. So. That Mr. doesn't all make any sense whatsoever. Yeah. But you look at it this way. So the good thing is I'm included in these discussions. If you actually go to the CIF website, I'm considered, like I'm actually on the CIF's state website as a super coach. So I'm in charge of getting all of this done. So let me, let me take uh, the range, capital R, Ethan, in range. Uh, Mr. Martinez, I have a quick question. Yeah, what's up? Save it and run it. Um, so you said that Play Versus might be giving out stuff for- They did, hold on, let me show you what I got so far. But will it count for HSEL, like for the Overwatch team? No, no, it won't. Oh, oh yeah, if you're, put it, so if you're playing esports, you're part of the team. You qualify to grab some of this gear. Okay. Absolutely. So let me show you. Okay, so they gave us headsets. They gave us three of these. They gave us three of these mice, and I've got a box of keyboards. The only downside is uh, this sucks. How cheap is this? Recertified. They didn't even give us new stuff. <laughs> How crappy is that? How are the keyboards? <laughs> I don't know. I haven't looked at it yet, but I'll, I'll definitely 